Hey everybody, Cigna here with the Bullish Bears. So in this video we're going to talk about the Busby. I get this question all the time. Uh, you're probably not going to find anything if you go to Google or YouTube and you just start searching for a Busby. And the reason for that is I'm the one who named it. I didn't create this. Uh, I'm not the one who pointed it out or first recognized that it happens. I heard it from a guy named Busby. He kept telling everybody in a video that I was watching that we don't want to buy at the highs, right? Or we don't want to sell at the lows. And that if you watch, price will test a range multiple times, finally break out, and more often than not, it will come back and it will validate that previous resistance as the new support before making its move and continuing on. <clears throat> now, once you get this idea and you start looking for it, you'll see it everywhere. And there's nothing wrong with buying a breakout. There really isn't. If you have a trade strategy that deals with buying on a breakout or selling on a breakdown, that's fine. There's, there's nothing wrong with it. The thing is, every trader has their own style of their own way of doing business. And for me, I play defensive. I would rather see a market perform a pattern and then give me an entry based on criteria. And for me, this is the perfect setup. I find it all over the place. I can use it on daily, weekly, monthly, intraday, even on a tick chart. So it is everywhere and it fits all time frames. And then using other logic, I can actually start looking for this at different times of the day, right? So what is it and how can we use it? In this picture, I've got a very perfect example of a Busby. And I know that it's perfect because I made it. I literally drew every single one of these candles. They're not real. I could perhaps have looked all over the place and found the perfect setup to give you an example. But this is the best way to do it right here because it's everything that we need to discuss. Now, in the real life, and we will go to real life examples, it's not going to be this clean. And there are parts that you have to use your own discretion on, right? Every single thing that we do in the marketplace eventually comes back to you, not me or to somebody else. So when you're going to trade a Busby, getting this pullback all the way back to structure before getting in, it doesn't always do that. Sometimes a market breaks out and just runs away and never comes back. Sometimes it breaks out and it only partially comes back before running away. So if you always have your order waiting down here, you're going to miss trades sometimes. If you always wait for a Busby, you're going to miss trade sometimes because it'll just run away, right? We all have to decide for ourselves how we're going to do this. Now, in futures, I typically, if I really want the trade, I'll front run that Busby. So what, what do I mean by that? Well, this tan line is where I would want to get in. But if I'm worried that I'm going to miss, I might perhaps use the highest candle or the highest body before that entry, right? Because what if price only comes down that far? What if it pulls back just to there and then runs away? So if I front run it, I now have to readjust everything that I do for stops and risk because I'm going to have some heat if it does pull through and come down to where I actually want it to get in, right? You got to figure out what are you going to do with that risk? How are you going to adjust your stops? Now me, I just average into it because if my original idea is to get in at that yellow line, then I'm okay having an order at that yellow line and having an order a little higher up. So what I call front run. So if I get caught in the first one and I continue to take heat to the second one, I am quote averaging down, but it's a planned average down, not me reacting to a trade saying, oh, well, I got to fix this. Let me try to average down. I don't recommend people trading that way. Right? The same thing for the other side. If this was to break out of the bottom, we'd be looking for it to come back and validate this range. 
one single candle breaking to the upside and then pulling back either in the same candle or in the very next candle doesn't really demonstrate this. Now, all we're trying to do here is give price room to make a move, come back and validate, and then go. Just like a flag or a cup and handle or a head and shoulders, nothing is going to be just perfect when you go to trade it in the market. You have to use some of your own discretion on how you're going to trade this. How are you going to deal with it when it doesn't come back all the way? What are you going to do when it comes back all the way and actually breaks through the resistance but doesn't close below, right? It's Maybe it wicks through and then it comes back up and how do you deal with it? You have to choose how to deal with it, okay? You have to decide for yourself how you're going to manage this or even if you're going to use this at all in your trading. This is a very clean, perfect example. The main thing to recognize here is that there was resistance. There was multiple tests. It finally broke through, and then it came back and validated it. So let's look at it in the real world on real charts and see if you could identify the trade opportunities. All right, so here we are on the NASDAQ. This was Wednesday last week, and you can see where I actually called out to the community that we were getting a Busby and we would be looking for an entry. Now, if you haven't watched any of my videos on the NASDAQ, you might not understand what these yellow lines are for. The main thing just to focus on here We'll just turn those off so that they're not distracting anybody. The main thing we want to focus on here is that we had the lunchtime window and a defined range. All right. Now, this trade, we took two ticks of heat off of the 86. I'm sure you've heard from multiple places before, price likes round numbers. If we go and we look at this, we had a clearly defined range at lunchtime. We were waiting for it to break that because it had a wedge earlier in the day. Everything had compressed. It was just building up energy, looking for a run, and it finally broke to the upside. Now for me, instead of jumping in as it broke to the upside, I don't want to buy at the high. We just waited for a pullback, and we had the order waiting at 86, and we took it for an 80-point run. Okay? That is one example out of many, many examples of how you can use this in your trading. Notice it was multiple candles. It wasn't just one candle breaking up and coming back down, or it wasn't one candle breaking up and the next candle coming back down. Price left that area and then came back and validated it. On Friday, we had the same setup again, a little more sloppy, but... Again, the same setup. So the lunchtime window was resolving this wedge that we had had through the morning. We got into lunch. It broke out of the range. Here was the lunchtime window. It broke to the upside. We waited for the pullback and took the trade. All right, now this was a little more sloppy. It actually had a little more heat in the trade. But again, when you're dealing with an 80, 90 point run, your stop can be adjusted to fit that kind of profits. Now, we don't know, right? We don't know, of course. It could just make a little bit of a run and then come back again. So your own rules need to let you define how much heat you're going to take in this trade, what your average stop size is going to be. And the only way to figure that out is to record your trades and know what your average trade size is. And then you need to know what your win rate is. And that will help you decide how big of a stop you should use. Another thing you could try to look at is the ATR. What's the average true range of the product you're trading on the time frame that you're wanting to trade it? Right? Because obviously if we were going to trade this from a bigger time frame, we would be looking for a bigger trade. We might be willing to use a bigger stop. All of that, again, comes back to you, not me or not somebody telling you. 
right? You have to make those decisions for how you're going to deal with your risk. This Busby right here is a really great example in the real world that we actually traded waiting on it to come back and give us our entry. This is exactly the value of it. Now, you'll find this everywhere. Everywhere. Tick charts, daily, weekly, monthly, intraday. You have to decide what time frame you're going to use. And if you're going to do that, make sure you back test it, which means you just look back. I like to use the 15 minute time frame. When I look back at a 15 minute time frame, I can find examples that it works and it works very well. And I'm willing to use that in my trading. All right? It is everywhere. And you have to decide how you're going to deal with this trade. Where is your stop going to be? What do you do if it doesn't come back all the way? What if you do it if, if it breaks through? All of those answers come from you. Okay? You now know about the Busby. And if you rewind this to the very beginning and you take a picture of the test and that that I showed, you can save that and you'll have it. All right? So I appreciate your time and I look forward to seeing you at the next video.